Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, on today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the uh, factory uh, crossbars for the uh, 2017 through 2021 Cadillac XT5. Um, and we're going to be unboxing and showing how to install them and just a general review of the uh, factory crossbars for this vehicle. So the uh, MSRP on these crossbars uh, at the time of filming is about $300. Um, however, if you're patient and you look around eBay, it's not hard to find, uh, find them cheaper than that. Um, so generally what I've seen is they're around $200 to $220 uh, on eBay. However, I was able to send some offers back and forth with a seller and get mine for $159. Um, you will find on eBay and Amazon and other places that there are some knockoffs that run close to $100. Um, you know, they're just no-name brand. I, they, they may be fine. Personally, I wouldn't uh, want something that's a no-name brand holding heavy things to the top of my nice car. Um, so I'd just rather spend the extra $100 and get something that GM specifically designed for this vehicle and I'm sure has been through all kinds of tests and verifications um, because they don't want to be responsible um, you know for damaging the vehicle or something bad happening uh, whereas these knockoff ones who knows what they've been through all right here's a look at the part number for the uh, official gm accessories uh, crossbars for the cadillac xt5 um, so that's the part number right there and i'll put that in the description as well um, these are the crossbars with the chrome um, accents. Uh, Cadillac also does make a, uh, a version that's all black um, for, for those who prefer that kind of look. And I'll leave a uh, part number for that in the description as well. So let's go ahead and unbox this set and see what, uh, see what there is to see. All right, let's just do a quick unboxing here. Pretty big box. This is actually what they ship in. Looks like they're pretty well packed here. All right, they're kind of hung on something. All right, so it looks like they've got the hardware pack glued to the inside of the box. Um, about halfway and that keeps the bars from pulling all the way out so you'll have to reach in there and, and grab that and we'll look at that a little bit more in a moment. Alrighty and there's what the uh, the bars look like just at a glance and we'll take a closer look at the the bars and the accessories now. Alright so here's a look at um, a close-up look at the end of one of the bars. Um, so there is a a little rubber piece here to keep the uh, the cross rails that are or the, the the rails that are already mounted to the vehicle from getting uh, scratched up. So that's kind of nice. Uh, looks like mine were made in 2018, according to this sticker. And so we do have some sort of adjustment point here potentially. Looks like we've got an empty hole and another uh, fastener already installed and out of the box. They're a little loose, and I'm guessing that's so you can um, get them adjusted properly for uh, for your roof. And so that's what the underside looks like, that same uh, brushed stainless look or brushed aluminum look, I guess. And there's a better look at the, uh, at the top of it there. Quick little additional note here. Um, so there actually is a front and a rear um, uh, marking on these on the end of the cross rails um, so apparently the the two cross rails are not identical so there's one that needs to go on the front of the uh, vehicle and one that needs to go on the rear and the uh, arrows indicate which direction they need to face uh, both of the arrows on both bars should point towards the front of the vehicle all right so next let's take a quick look at what's in this pack of uh, hardware and accessories here So, of course, helpfully, we do have the uh, instructions, which is always a good thing to have. And 
Um, if you, uh, you you'll want to stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to have some important details and measurements of uh, where everything falls once you have the cross rails on the vehicle. Um, if you're going to go look to put a storage uh, box on top of the vehicle, most of the manufacturers of those have certain measurements they want you to look for, and so I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to measure everything up at the end of the video and give you guys those details so you know what to look for. And so it looks like we do have uh, some various, um, looks like Torx fasteners, a bag of four smaller ones and a bag of, I don't know how many um, larger ones. I'm guessing um, these are the ones that mount the, the rails to the exist or the bars to the existing rails on top of the vehicle. And finally, what is potentially the most interesting thing in the, uh, in the bag of accessories and hardware, this is a teeny tiny torque tool. That's right. Um, this has actually got the, uh, the proper uh, torque spit on both ends here for, for the included hardware. And if we look real close, if I can get this to show up, it is very hard to get that to focus on this neon green plastic part, but um, if you can tell in the middle, it actually shows you um, a little line uh, about the uh, proper uh, what the proper torque is going to be for these uh, for these bolts. So I guess when you um, start putting some some torque on the little wrench, uh, this little bar moves and it's supposed to be on that line I would assume. So that is that is pretty interesting stuff right there. It's very helpful um, and I don't think I've ever seen a tool quite like this before. So uh, very unique um, and uh, I'd hate to have to track one of these down again. I'm, I'm sure it's not not an easy to find part. However, uh, uh, you know any any old uh, Torx bit or driver would work um, but for safety this tells you the uh, the proper torque for it. Alrighty, so uh, on the X-T5, um, if you're using the factory bars, um, there are positions already set up for those bars. Um, so if you've never had bars in your vehicle before, it's likely going to look something like this, uh, the front and the back, with these little plastic uh, plugs already in place. So this is what the bars are going to fasten to. Kind of nice in, on one hand because with the SRX that I used to have, um, there was you know, you can mount them anywhere, but there was specific measurements you were supposed to follow for safety and for load bearing. And so that was kind of a pain to put them on. And I, I don't really like the look of, of bars on the vehicle all the time. So I usually only have them on when I'm, um, when I'm needing them. So having to measure it up all the time and put them in the right places was kind of a pain on the SRX. So maybe this will be easier. Of course, the downside is, you know, you can't adjust them if you need to. Uh, but at least it takes the guesswork out of it. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is to remove these plugs. Now, if you're like me, um, at first glance, it would look like you'd just take a flat blade screwdriver and um, pop these out. Um, but you'd be mistaken. And I'm glad that I uh, figured this out before I destroyed these and, and everything else. But um, so basically, these are going to unscrew. Um, so you'll have to just take your fingers and kind of get a grip on it on the edges of the um, plug here. And then it's just going to unscrew. And that's what you're left with there. Um, so yeah, I mean, on, typically if you have something that unscrews, you would have like a little slot or the Phillips on the end. So they're a little tricky. Um, and I would, uh, I've seen reports of people trying to pry these out and actually the, the end of it gets broken off inside. So you definitely wanna uh, make sure you unscrew it. And there we go. So I'm going to go around real quick and get the rest of these out. So here's a better close up on one of those little plugs and what they look like. Um, for me personally, the jury's still out on whether I'll put these back in. Um, admittedly, they do look better um, because the, 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 the metal receivers on the bars for those bolts are not, they don't really match. They're a little darker. Uh, so they do stick out like sore thumbs a little bit more. But these are kind of tedious to remove. It's a little bit hard to get a grip on these edges and pull them out. 
Um, I'm going to save them. We'll see. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get the crossbar set up on the vehicle. So I've got the rear one here first, and I'm making sure to have the arrows lined up correctly. And I will say it is a, a snug fit. I mean, overall, that's a better design than what they had on the SRX. Uh, the other ones would on the SRX were a lot more adjustable, and they would just kind of flop everywhere when you're trying to get them on. Um, so these are these are a lot more snug. They feel better quality and more substantial. Um, because they're more snug, definitely have to be careful to uh, to not scratch anything. Like I said, they do have the little rubber uh, pads on them. Um, but if you're going to be taking them off and removing them, you'll want to be quite careful. So now we'll get the front one on there. I'm just trying to align them best I can with the holes. All right, so the larger bolts do uh, go into the side rails. And these, uh, it's a T30 Torx. Uh, of course, uh, again, we've got this this nifty tool here, uh, which I will use to snug them up. But I do have this little electric screwdriver with a T30 bit on it that I think will make this a little quicker. So those are in, and now we're going to snug it up. And I will say that uh, this teeny tiny torque tool does take the uh, guesswork out of how tight the, um, the bolts need to be. Um, so I'm going to go around and do um, the rest of these real quick. Um, and then they, uh, they have you coming back and doing... Uh, the smaller bolts up top last. I just want to give you guys a little bit better view of this uh, torque wrench in action. So it's pretty neat for what it is. So you can see there we've got it snugged up about where they want us to be. All right, so now we're going to come back and uh, put in the smaller fasteners uh, up into the bottom side of each bar. Uh, remember, there's already one in place, it's just uh, not been snugged in, and then we'll add the, uh, the second one that they provide. And this is also a T30. Um, this would be really handy to at least get these started with a, with a small ratchet. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have a T30. Uh, that's short enough to fit up into here, so I'll have to use uh, this tool that's included. Now, of course, some of you might be thinking to yourselves, well, why wouldn't, wouldn't it be easier to tighten these down um, before you put the bars on the roof? And I would agree with you. Um, my guess is the reason that these fasteners even exist is probably to allow a little bit of, um, a little bit of, give and take with uh, mounting the bars on the roof uh, to account for uh, any slight tolerances from one vehicle to, a net, to the next. Um, so my gut is once these are in there, um, you can just leave them and, um, and only, only worry about these bolts if you want to take them on and off. Um, like I said, I'm not a big fan of leaving these on all the time. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll feel differently about these ones. Um, but um, I would feel like you can probably just um, get these torqued down for your roof and then next time um, leave them be. Alrighty, we've got them all snugged down and torqued down and so we are pretty much uh, ready to rock and roll. Um, they don't look too bad. Uh, let, me, uh, let me get some measurements for you and uh, we'll talk about that next. All right, guys, some uh, quick measurements for you. Um, when you go to purchase a roof box, um, they are typically going to ask for two measurements to determine um, proper clearance for the hatch. 
Um, the first measurement is going to be from the center of the top bar uh, to the end of the roof, um, which on this uh, vehicle is 57 inches. Uh, the other measurement they commonly want is the distance between these two bars, center to center, and that's about uh, 27 and a half inches. Just for some other uh, numbers for you, um, the center of this bar to the back of the roof is about 29 and a half uh, inches, and the center of the front bar to the uh, to where the window starts in the front is uh, about 26 inches. And one final measurement: uh, the distance between the uh, top of the uh, car and the top of the roof rack is about four and a half inches. Uh, so if you're trying to figure out how much height you're going to have uh, with a box or other cargo on top, you're going to need to add about four and a half inches to the total. All right, and the other technical spec I'll give you is that according to the owner's manual, uh, the limit for loading cargo on the roof rack is 220 pounds, which is, that's pretty good. Uh, most of the roof boxes that I've been looking at lately uh, max out at 150 or 160 pounds. Um, and then the box itself is gonna be about, you know, 40, 50 pounds. So that means you could load the, your average box uh, to its safety, safe capacity and still be within the limits of, uh, of what GM wants you to put on the roof, including uh, the weight of the box itself. All right, like, next up, let's take this uh, for a test drive and see how these perform with uh, nothing on them as far as wind noise goes. Let's see if we can uh, hear any difference um, going down the highway. All right, first time out on the road with the uh, roof rails installed here. Um, it's, it's interesting. I mean, if you're just having a conversation, like I'm talking to the camera right now, don't really notice it. Um, before I started recording, I was paying better attention and at 55 miles an hour, you really have to um, listen for it. I mean, you'd have to have your radio off and everything like that. Um, once we get up to like 70 miles an hour, it's a little bit more noticeable. It's not loud by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a noise that wasn't there before. Um, so there is some wind noise on these bars. There was some on the factory SRX bars as well. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty common. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's Again, I'm not a big fan of leaving them on the vehicle all the time anyway, just from a, an aesthetics point of view. Um, so, you know, we've got a uh, vacation coming up, and um, so we'll be using those uh, likely with a cargo box. And um, so I'll have them on for that, and then sometimes work, I need to haul a ladder or something like that. Um, so we'll see. Um, I probably wouldn't leave them on all the time. So it's not, not a big deal. I would imagine there's going to be quite a bit more um, wind noise um, once we have a cargo box up there, and I'm sure that'll be part of that review. Um, but it's it's totally um, it, it's totally doable. It, it's not bad. Um, I'm pretty picky when it comes to road noise, so you know it may be something that the average person wouldn't notice at all. Um, but it is there. It's not. It's not silent. Um, not noisy, but not silent. Alrighty, guys, that about does it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I do uh, plan to uh, purchase a, a cargo box, um, so I'm sure I'll have a review and installation guide on that coming up soon. Um, so make sure you're, you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that. Um, thanks for watching.